In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I relocated my spare tire, my fifth wheel from this front storage compartment down below the frame here. I freed up a ton of valuable storage space and I only spent a couple bucks. <laughs> Now this is my Hemisphere 378 FL fifth wheel. And if you haven't seen the full video tour and review on it, I'll throw a card up for that. But if you've got a fifth wheel and the spare tire came mounted from the factory, either in your front storage compartment here, or maybe even one of your side basement storage compartments, chances are this solution will work for you. So originally this fifth wheel came with the spare tire from the factory mounted against this wall here in the front storage compartment. But check out how much space you get when you remove it. You can actually fit zero gravity chairs widthwise laying flat there and just check out all the other space that it opens up when you get rid of that spare tire. Now I also removed a second lead acid battery from this storage compartment and I'll throw a card up for that video where I upgraded to a single lithium battery but let me remove all this gear so you get a better idea of what it looks like with the tire in here beforehand. So I've emptied everything out of the front storage compartment. I wanted to give you an idea of just how much stuff you can fit in there once the spare tire is removed. Now I probably had it about half full, maybe a little bit over half full. So it's really amazing just how much space gets opened up once you pull that spare tire out. But let me show you where it was mounted originally. So on this vertical wall, you can see there's a hole here and a second hole up here. And so that's where the spare tire mount was originally mounted. And basically all I did is relocate it. You can see there's two bolts down here. That's the same exact spare tire mount, just on the outside now. Here's a view from underneath and notice how it's tied up against that storage compartment and mounted kind of right halfway between where the frame and the underbelly start and where that storage compartment is above. And for those curious how much ground clearance you lose, so right now I'm reading about 18 inches. I am about three inches nose high where I store it here. So really about 15 inches of ground clearance below your spare tire. Now this is a straight frame fifth wheel, meaning that the frame runs over the axles and all the way straight to the front it's not a drop frame so if you've got a drop frame fifth wheel where there's a section of frame member that drops down to give you more storage space in the front you may not have enough ground clearance to do this but for reference again i'm looking at 15 inches approximately of ground clearance from the tire to the ground when i'm sitting level now you can see here I put a vinyl spare tire cover on it, which is not necessary. You know, most cars have the spare tire mounted under the chassis in the back and there's no cover on it. But I figure for 20 bucks, might as well keep it covered and away from all the road grime. But let me take it off and show you what it looks like removing the spare tire and then how I transferred the existing mount under the frame here. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong socket size. I thought it was a standard 3 4 inch, but it's actually a 13 16 on the lug nut size. And I'll give you a real close up view too. You can see that it's real simple. It's just a plate that runs across the center of the wheel. And then you've got a lug nut plus a second as a backup. And then one lug nut going through the actual rim of the wheel. So really straightforward. But let me remove the tire so you get an idea of what that process looks like. All right, so I'm sure everyone's impressed just how gracefully I removed that spare tire. And that is the one con to reusing the bracket is you're fighting gravity and that spare tire is not light. It weighs a good chunk. And so you kind of have to use your leg to maneuver it down as you're loosening that last lug nut off of the, the mount. And so that's kind of a good time just to talk about your other alternatives. Yes, you can buy a spare tire mount that has a cable and a crank and you crank it and it gently drops it down. And that's great. Some of those are 50 to 100 bucks and you of course have to mount them up underneath your underbelly and then leave room for that cable and a, and a pole to crank and, and remove it. Then there's also gravity 
gravity fed ones that just have like an arm and a hinge on it and it just kind of tilts down and that spare tire kind of just slides on out of there and those are nice too but they are kind of pricey a lot of times they're 100 150 200 sometimes even over 300 dollars and I will put links in the description below if you are interested in one of those alternative spare tire mounts. But for me, I thought about it and I said, you know, I really don't think I'm going to be mounting and unmounting this spare tire frequently. You know, I'm really aggressive on checking my tire pressure and monitoring it on the rig. I'm always real careful to make sure that I don't exceed the weight on the axles and the tires on the rig. And so why spend a couple hundred bucks or even more than that? on a spare tire mount that I'm probably not going to be using that frequently, if at all. And so that's what led me to just keep the existing spare tire mount from the inside storage and just relocate it underneath. And literally, I only had to spend a couple bucks on the bolts that I'll show you here in just a minute. But that's why I chose to do this method, even though it is a little inconvenient when you're mounting and unmounting that spare tire. For me, the cost savings are worth it. So here's what it looks like with the spare tire unmounted. And you can see it's basically just a U-bracket with some flanges here that are mounted up to the underside of this storage. And then it's just got two bolts here that connect to the lags on the spare tire. And then inside the storage compartment, you can see there's only two bolts and two washers. And these are the only parts that I actually had to buy to mount that spare tire underneath. And of course, the other washers and nuts underneath. I went ahead and did do grade eight bolts and washers just to have something real strong that I wouldn't have to be concerned about shearing off you know, with the weight of the spare tire and for safety since it's hanging underneath. But I chose to mount it right here for a couple reasons. You can see in this storage compartment, there's this piece of metal here, which is essentially the first frame member on the chassis. And so you can see that that piece of metal goes down kind of like an L bracket and has this little lip right here. And then it's also welded to the bottom, this kind of this tray for this front storage compartment. So you've got two layers thick of steel right underneath this L piece here. And then of course you've got all this vertical support supporting that weight directly below. And so for me, that made a lot of sense. You know, you wanna be safe. You wanna mount in a way that's going to be able to support the weight of the spare tire and you don't have to worry about it falling off. And so there's plenty of structure right here to support the spare tire from underneath and so basically all I did is measure to the center of the fifth wheel underneath here and then marked my holes for the bracket and then just drilled through all the way through the bottom here of the tray and the frame member and then put my bolts in there you can see I did use a flat washer plus a lock washer and then my grade 8 bolts there there's certainly room to mount the spare tire more forward to the front of the rig here, but for me, this just didn't seem as strong to support the weight of the spare tire over time. I was concerned that if I mounted it farther forward here, that it might wanna bulge or kinda of sag here. You know, So just to be safe, I really think it's best to mount it back here where the frame member starts going up. You've got all that vertical support supporting the weight of the tire. All right, so let me show you what it looks like to mount the spare tire. And again, this is not very graceful, but let me show you how I do it. And I'm just gonna tell you, it is a bit of a struggle. Once you get one bolt in there, you can move your legs. That's really the hardest part. And then again, one of these bolts goes through the actual spokes on the wheel. And then the other one just goes through the middle. And I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I did buy an additional lug nut here with a lock washer built into it, so a locking nut, just to have extra assurance that this isn't gonna fall off. Of course, it helps too to have an impact wrench. And then I took the, the third nut and just recycled it here just as a backup on the main bolt right there, just in case. So you can see it's not super graceful, but it can be done. You just have to use your legs and arms all at the same time to get it up there. 
All right, just a few close-up views before I put the spare tire cover back on. So you can see here you've got your plate running across the center of the tire, then that grade 8 lock nut, and then a second backup nut just in case, and then the other nut that actually runs through one of the spokes here on the wheel itself. So very solid and very secure once it's all mounted. And now for the spare tire cover, and again, this is completely optional. It just keeps the spare tire nice and clean from all the road grime underneath. And you can see here, I've just got an elastic banded vinyl spare tire cover, and I will put a link in the description for this exact same one if your tire diameter is the same. But I usually start on the front here, and there is a little bit of give on the mount, so you do have room to put the cover on up all the way around. And I just kind of work my way around and I want to make sure that it's all the way up on the tire so that wind underneath doesn't make the uh, cover go flying in the wind. But it doesn't take too much effort. I keep the seam in the very back here just so that water, if any water were to come up underneath here, you don't have to worry about it getting up in that spare tire cover. And now our cover's back on and the tire's protected from the elements. Now for those wondering, my tire size is ST23580 R16. But don't worry if your tire's different, there are plenty of these vinyl spare tire covers that you can get online to keep your tire protected and most of them run under 20 bucks. All right, last question, is it worth it? Now that's something you're really gonna have to answer for yourself and just kind of weigh the pros and cons, the inconvenience of having to raise and lower this manually. And it is a little bit clumsy, but for me, when I think about saving, you know, 100, 200, $300 or more compared to one of those alternative spare tire mounts, and I'm just not frequently raising and lowering this spare tire to begin with, it just didn't make sense for me to spend that extra money. And so I was glad to be able to repurpose that existing spare tire mount and only spend a couple bucks on those bolts. So that's something you'll have to decide for yourself, but I hope you found this video helpful either way. Now I made this video by request of a viewer that saw the full tour and review on this rig. And so if you haven't checked out that video, definitely check it out. You know, it's always fun to see someone who's owned a rig for a while, what they've done to it and some of the mods and upgrades to make the whole experience more enjoyable. So definitely check it out. If you see a mod or an upgrade in that video that you'd like more information on, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to accommodate those requests. As always, thanks for watching.